back to That Paradox Computing's Introduction to Computercraft for the Complete Beginner. That's not a snappy intro, and I've got to fix that up, make it something, you know, a bit more, with a bit more zest, a bit more, just quick, really. Um, cool, so what are we dealing with today? Rednet! Gonna be fun. Um, first off, let me apologize for the fan that's blowing in the background, you may be able to hear that. This is Australia, mate, and it's 35 degrees outside. It's bloody hot, mate. So, um, yeah, sorry, you gotta put up with that because it's a scorcher today. Um, cool, so let's get started with RedNet. Um, for this episode, you're gonna need to grab yourself an advanced computer, a wireless modem, a fireworks launcher, and um, a couple of little bits and pieces we'll get along the way. So, first thing you should do is plonk down two computers um, and get their IDs by typing ID. We've seen this before, but um, RedNet sends messages between each other, or, you, sorry, the two computers will send messages to each other dependent on these IDs. Um, that probably didn't make a lot of sense the way I just said it then. Anyway, plonk one down, whack a fireworks launcher next to it, and um, on the left-hand side, put a wireless modem. Um, then on the other one, whack down a, um, well, for now, put a, uh, red, a lever on top, a, the computer, and then a modem underneath it. Easy as. Cool. So let's have a look at some of the rednet commands. Uh, we'll go into Lua. I'll make sure that a little, um, listen program I made before is still running. No, it's not. So let's run listen. Oh, actually, let's clear the screen. Clear. And then listen. Cool. So this one's listening for messages over the red net. And I'll show you how it's doing that in a second. But first, let's try sending a message over the red net. So the first thing you have to do is rednet.open. And we did kind of look at this in the peripherals um, little uh, episode I did. And we'll say bottom. Oop. Bottom. So the red net is, the modem is on the bottom. So we're going to open red net on the bottom. Done. And now you can see this has this neat little red line here which lets us know that the modem is on. So let's do our first rednet uh, command, which is rednet.broadcast. Yep, and then we can give it a message. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna send a message to every computer with its ears on, every computer with a rednet um, that's listening for rednet uh, messages. So we'll say hi. Um, so that's sent. And now our other computer with the listen program over here should have just picked up the message hi cool let's run listen again and we'll try a different method of sending messages now before we just went and got the ids off our computers um this computer's 35 the other one is 34 so let's try a red uh sorry red net dot send instead of broadcast and we can send that specifically to computer 34 with the same message oh let's try a different message uh g'day mate it's hot. Um, so let's try sending that message this time. Oh, and one thing to bear in mind, whenever you, um, so when you broadcast the message you send or when you send, the message has to be a string. So that means um, inside, um, you know, uh, quotation marks, inverted commas, whatever. Bam, true, so it has sent a message. Now let's see if our guy got that message. Spoiler alert, yeah, he did. Look at that. Um, so we can see that we got the message, G'day mate, it's hot. We also see the um, ID of the sender as well. So that's kind of cool. So we've gotten rednet.open to use your modem, uh, rednet.broadcast to send to any computer that's listening on the rednet, and rednet.send, which sends specifically to the specified ID. Now, let's have a look at how this computer is listening for rednet messages. Um, it's not listening the way you probably usually would. Um, but I thought I'd show this um, just to make things confuse confusing. <laughs> um, okay, so as you can see here, rednet.open. So this program opens up the rednet um, so it can listen for messages. Now I'm using an os.pull event and um, I'm gonna assume that you watch our video before on events. So. You can listen for rednet messages um, over um, using the os.pull event uh, function. 
it generates um, five, actually I think it may even generate six um, different little um, bits of information that you need to assign to a variable. Here we're just assigning it to A, B, C, D, and E. A is um, obviously the event. So if you remember in our event um, video, the first thing you get is the event and then all the events, different little parameters. The event in this case is uh, rednet underscore message, all one word. Um, the next thing you get is the side um, that the message has come from, the side of the computer, basically the side that the modem's on. So in this case, B would be left because it's on the left-hand side of the computer. C is, um, where's C? Range, I think? C is a number, which I can't remember. Um, anyway, C is not important. Um, <laughs> Try your own little program, see if you can figure out what C is. I forget. I think it could be the range, um, so the distance that it, um, the message was sent from. D is um, the ID of the computer that sent the message. So here you can see we're printing D. So we're saying ID is D. Um, and E is the message that was received. I think if there is a 61F, that would be the distance. Yeah, anyway. So that's if you want to use events. I'm just showing you that, maybe write it down somewhere, take note of it now if you want, but that's just one way of doing it, except in the script we're about to write, we're not going to use events, okay? So, speaking of that script that we're about to write, um, let's get started on it. Um, so, we'll exit uh, Lua here. So, get onto your computer and create a new file and we'll call it, uh, well, we'll just call it RedNet. Um, nice, edit rednet. Okay, so the first thing obviously we need to do is open, um, so it's rednet.open, yeah. Open our rednet, on this case, uh, the modem is located on the bottom of the computer. Done, um, we're gonna stick this in a while, uh, while true do loop, should remember that from the previous episode. And um, now, we wanna make it so whenever we flip this switch, fireworks go off over there. Fuck yeah, buddy. Um, so, we're going to do, um, to get a redstone input on your computer, you need to, actually, I think I've got a listen program in here, so I didn't save any of that, did I? That's embarrassing. Uh, there should be a listen program. Yeah, I like to put those on computers, they're handy. Um, doesn't come by default, but so this is listening for events, as the other one was. We flip that, and we can see the event that was generated is redstone. So let's edit RedNet, which I didn't save at all. Open, sorry, so let's watch me uh, retype this. RedNet.open bo uh, bottom. And then red. So I'm trying to do it quickly. I'm just making mistakes. RedNet.open bottom while true do. Okay. While true do. So we're going to do um, a pull event. So... Uh, sorry, an os.pull event. So um, and this one, let's listen specifically. So we'll do os.pull ev event, and we're just going to say redstone. So by defining, you can just do an os.pull event, but then any event would kick it off, whether it's someone looking at it and touching a button or some random rednet message coming to it, perhaps. This way, we're getting it to listen specifically for a redstone um, event, which would be. Um, a lever, a button, whatever, you know, your normal redstone inputs. Um, cool. So, after it's done that, so once it's, we've flipped the lever and given it a redstone signal, um, we want it to rednet.send to computer, uh, God, what was it? Was it 34 over there? I believe it was 34. And let's give it a message. So, um, let's just say fire. Fire in the hole. Cool. So, yeah, um, why don't you try writing down that bit? Nice, I think that should all work. Yeah, write that down. Just be careful to watch out for the, um, you know, capital E and pull event. Uh, make sure you close your loop, that sort of thing. Um, that your modem's on the side that you put there. Cool, exit. Let's just see if that works. Uh, we'll run rednet. Um, we'll just make sure the listen program's going on this guy. It's not. So now it's listening for a rednet message. Let's see if we flip the lever, does it get a message? It does. It gets from computer 35, the message fire. So on that side, we've created our remote trigger for our fireworks display. Pretty good. 
Um, now, let's um, edit, uh, we'll call it rednet on this guy as well. And we're going to do the same thing. So, rednet.open. Uh, and it's on the left hand side of this computer, I believe. <clears throat> so, rednet.open on the left. We'll do another while true do. So, we'll get it in a loop that keeps on going. Um, and we're going to say, um, well, we need to be listening for a rednet message. So, let's say id and message. <clears throat> equal, and this is how, so before when we are looking at that listen program, um, we were getting, we were using uh, os.pullEvent to listen for an, an event over the rednet. There's another way you can do it, you can go rednet.receive, and this is probably a much cleaner way of doing it, because um, it's only going to react to rednet messages basically. So. Try and always use a rednet.receive. Um, if you're trying to listen for more than one thing, so you don't know if you get a rednet signal or someone's going to touch a monitor or um, or someone's going to hit a lever or something, then you can use um, an os.pull event and listen for the different events. So that's when it's handy. But in this case, rednet.receive really is all we want. So when a rednet message comes, it's going to assign these two variables, ID and message. I do believe you could probably put in um, distance as well. Um, so the next thing it can also get is the distance between the uh, two computers, but we don't need that right now. Um, really, we, we just want ID and message. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so the next thing we wanted to do is um, we'll put in an if. So we're going to do an if statement because um, we want to make sure, let's just pretend, even though we're not, say we're on a public server and people are firing rednet messages all over the place and it's a complete mess. Um, we only want to uh, fire fireworks if we get a message from our trigger. So we don't want someone's random rednet message to set off our... Um, uh, set off our fireworks display. So well, let's say if ID, so the um, the ID of the computer w we just got um, is so it's our computer over there is 35. So we want to make sure that the mess the message came from ID 35. Um, and let's try and and to be very specific. Let's say message is equal. Um, sorry, message is equal to um, what do we say? Fire, fire. Uh, then. So, also something new we've come across here, and look at that. So we could also say um, there's and and there's or, which we haven't dealt with before. We can look for two different things, even more. You can keep saying and, and, and. We can make our if statement only meet um, a bunch of, of conditions that we set up. Uh, so we want it to be definitely that computer and definitely that message. But we could just say, you know what, if we get any message from that computer or another computer sends us a message of fire, then go nuts. But in this case, we're being very specific. So there's um, an example of being able to use, uh, you know, different uh, or more than one, um, you know, qualifier for your if statements. Ta-da! <clears throat> so, now comes the fun part. Um, what we haven't done is wrapped our fireworks launcher. So here it is on the right. So let's say FW, do you want to call it that? Fire, yeah, equals peripheral dot wrap. So wrapping a peripheral we've dealt with before. Um, on the right, so we've defined what we're going to call our peripheral and where it is. And so now the computer knows that when we tell it... Um, fw like we're about to fw dot launch and this is uh so we say fw fw it knows it's um referring to the fireworks launcher and the fireworks launcher only has one command launch um and in there basically uh let's have a look inside the fireworks launcher and let's give it a bunch of stuff um da -da 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 Fireworks launchers um, use all the same uh, recipes you use for fireworks, you know, in the vanilla game. So um, if you want to know exactly what you can put in a fireworks launcher, I suggest that you Google fireworks um, in Minecraft. Um, but yeah, basically each slot has a number. It's kind of like a turtle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way through to like 56 or whatever that is. Um, 
Anyway, so we'll give it a bunch of random stuff. And basically what you do is you say um, FW or whatever you name your peripheral dot launch. And then you tell it what slots you want it to select. Now, a firework in the fireworks launcher has to use gunpowder, which <clears throat> we have put in slot one. But let's say we want to now mix up the other, what is that, seven slots? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. Um, the, the other seven slots. Well, let's get to do a, um, a math.random. Uh, actually, we want to do a few math.random, so the easiest thing to do, actually, is just to define a, let's just say x equals math.random. We've dealt with math.random before. It's our number, our random number generator. What did I say just before? Seven, or so eight slots. We've got, we're using eight slots. Um, so let's just do a random between one and eight. <clears throat> it's definitely going to use um, gunpowder, but if it uses gunpowder twice, it's going to go even further, so that should make things a bit more interesting. Um, so x equals math.random, um, so it'll generate a random number between one and eight. So now we can just say uh, x, 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 we'll make it use four slots. Um, so we'll just randomly pick for each of those um, yeah, so we'll use four ingredients, three of which chosen at random from these slots. Easy. We'll say, uh, end. We'll say end again. And basically that should be the program to, um, to launch fireworks once we hit our trigger. So let's run RedNet. Let's see if I've made any mistakes. It's looking positive. And if I've done everything correctly, this should be a bit of fun. Yay! Woohoo! Why are they all just red and normal and boring? Well, that's not right. It should be picking up random, unless we've had extraordinarily bad luck. Oh wow, you used all the red. Alright, let's see what it does when it, now it has no red to use. Come on, pick a random slot. No. It's only using slots one and two. Let's see where we went wrong. This will be interesting. Um, I see no reason why that code shouldn't have worked. X equals math.random between one and eight. Firework. So it's definitely picking slot one because it has to use slot one, yeah. Why did it pick slot four? Uh, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Math dot random. All right, let's try actually giving it a math dot random. Oops. Uh, uh, whoops. Sorry. Just realized I've got to give it a. This has nothing to do with RedNet, so I really shouldn't be spending much time on it. But you know what? It's fun to watch someone debug code because you know you just get to see how frustrating it is. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. RedNet, let's see if it at least picks up something different. That X, oh, guys, I know what the problem is. Ah, I'm so dumb. I am so dumb. What's happening is the first time the code executes, it's generating its math.random there. So really what we want to do is make it, ah, uh, okay. So basically it generated a math.random um, here. And then the while true do loop, well, it had already been generated, so that was staying exactly the same. It's that whole chronological order thing we were talking in. So it's doing the while true do loop in here. Okay, well, that makes a lot more sense. Um, <clears throat> so we just want to make it do that every time it runs the loop. So we'll just do x here equals uh, math.random 1, comma, uh, 8. And let's give it some more rows red. And uh, let's just make sure we've got enough gunpowder. Gun. Yeah, uh, no, grab the wrong thing. Grab sulfur. Not helpful. Okay, sweet. All right, so now it's going to do, now every time it runs the loop, every time it gets a message, it's going to do, um, it's going to generate a new math.random. Save, exit, red net. Okay. So, sorry that that took a while and was probably frustrating to watch. But so worth it! Woo! Let's make it night time! Um, did I say to noon? I totally just said to noon! Woo! <laughs> Isn't that great? Rednet, ladies and gentlemen! 
Yeah! <laughs> so there you go, guys. Your own remote trigger for a fireworks display. Ta-da! Wasn't it worth it? Um, so we learned some interesting stuff this episode. Uh, we learned how to use the fireworks launcher. Always fun. We learned the rednet commands, which is very important. Rednet.send. Um, so you, with rednet.send, you give it the ID of the computer it's going to and the message. Rednet.broadcast, where you just give it a message and it will go to every computer. Um, rednet.open, to open up your modem. And rednet.receive, to receive a rednet message. Easy! We also learned about uh, use, getting redstone inputs and, um, yeah, a bunch of stuff. It's been a big episode. I hope that wasn't too much to take in. Um, I'll just, very quickly, you probably didn't, I didn't give you guys a chance to um, write in this program, so why don't you do that? Um, have your own little play around with uh, the fireworks launcher especially, but also with, um, yeah, you know, red net messages and sending them to different computers. Um, maybe you could set up a field of fireworks launches and use the rednet.broadcast command instead of rednet.send. Um, and yeah, have some fun with it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, next episode could get a little strange. It's going to be about um, using a paste bin and editing your code outside of Minecraft. Um, so we'll see how we handle all of that. It's going to be an interesting episode. It might take me a couple of days. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you are so inclined. If not, okay, fine. I get it. You don't like me. Um, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.